Hey guys, what's going on today? I wanted to share my consult with you guys with Dr. Hope Cherie from Cosmetic Concierge. Now, I didn't end up choosing them um, as my final um, top surgeon because I had um, gained insurance, so I had options to more, you know, people who are um, like used insurance and like offered insurance coverage, and Dr. Hope Cherie does not. Um, so, but I did want to share this on here so people can know what to expect for their consults if they're going for Dr. Hope Cherie. I was actually scheduled for an in-person consult, but um, when me, my wife and I got ready to leave for the consult, I'd actually lost my wallet. So I couldn't find my wallet. I was super like stressed and like overwhelmed. And I was like, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'm just gonna screw this. You know, I'll call them and reschedule. Like it's not meant to be for today. And you know, um, we'll do it in person. So I was actually able to do it in person that day. Um, and that's what this coverage is, this film is for. So I wanted to share that with you. I wanna share this with you so you guys can know what to expect. And if you're watching this, I hope you have a wonderful day. Big questions today, big answers hopefully. I had to send them three photos of front facing and then from the side, from either side, um, with my shirt off. So that was a little weird because I've never met them, but it's better than missing my consultation entirely. Hey, this is this Aaron? Hey, yeah, this is Aaron. Hey, Aaron, this is Max from the Cosmetic Concierge. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I am doing well. Apologize. I know you've had a little bit of a rough day with the losing the wallet and everything. Oh my gosh, that was ridiculous. <laughs> Did you find it? I sure did. Yeah, I fell behind the freaking dresser, and I'm like three and a half hours from you guys. So by the time I found it, it was already too late to make it. So yeah, that was. That's all right. We got it worked out. So. Yes, and you got my photos. We did. We did. So those cool. are all loaded in. Um, pretty much how this works on my end is I'm just going to go through your medical information with you, just making sure everything has crossed over in our patient portal correctly, and then I go over a few additional things, and then Dr. Shree will get on the line, okay? That sounds good. Awesome. So, first question I have for you is, do you have any allergies to any foods or medications at all? Uh, no. Awesome. And are you okay with latex and adhesive? Any skin sensitivity? Uh, no. How did you hear about it, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I think I was, um, I think topsurgery.net is my guess. Perfect. Online for sure. And I have here that you are currently around 5'6", and current weight is around 192, is that correct? It's probably uh, closer to 200 now, but yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And so the only thing that we would ask, just because you weren't able to come into the office, is we just want to make sure that um, if you do schedule with us, we just get an updated weight. So an updated weight and also an updated blood pressure, okay? Okay, that sounds good. So you can just use a home scale, a home blood pressure cuff, take a picture of the reading, and email it to us, and that'd be sufficient. And that's only if you schedule. Perfect. All right. So as far as medical history goes, uh, I'm just seeing the anxiety mostly. Um, so no cardiac issues, no respiratory issues, no bleeding or blood disorders, correct? Correct. Awesome. And I do see tonsils removed back in 2005. Have we had any other procedures, any other surgeries? Uh, no. Is everything going well with those new medications? Yes. You have here you are a light smoker is that correct yes true okay so how long have you been smoking for uh about four years the height of smoking how much how many cigarettes would you say smoke a day about 10. not super super heavy uh, we do like for everyone to stop smoking at least two weeks prior to surgery mm -hmm. just because Nicotine does restrict the blood flow, so we want to just make sure that you have as much blood flow as possible, okay? Yeah, I'll try to, I'm going to try to quit too before my actual date, so yeah, definitely. And do we take any vitamins or any herbal supplements at all? Uh, no. Unless, uh, herbal supplements is like marijuana. I do, yeah. Do you do the edibles? Uh, no, I smoke. That's fine. So, same thing with that. We 
just went on smoking or vaping. So no nicotine and no smoking the marijuana. You can do edibles, so if you want to cook with it or if you want to get gummies, you can use that for okay. surgery. That's fine. Okay, cool. checklist and there are no right or wrong answers. Uh, basically, I just ask a question. If you say yes, I select it. If you say no, it just stays blank, okay? Okay. Right. So do you currently wear a binder or bind your chest at all? I do. I, uh, I use trans tape. And have you ever had any counseling for gender dysphoria, even if it was a one-time session? Uh, yes. Right. Have you done any research online as far as which procedure you're most interested in? Yes. Which procedure is that? Um, it's uh, definitely either um, a double incision or double incision with the buttonhole. Uh, I just had some questions. Okay. And uh, typically, uh, with the with the buttonhole procedure, that one is geared towards retaining as much nipple sensation as possible. Is that kind of the idea behind that one? Uh, yeah, yeah. As long as it doesn't um, jeopardize like the cosmetic result, I think would be my biggest concern. always have the flattest option uh, so Dr. Shree doesn't remove all the tissue so that there that means that it's a little bit of left in the chest. Gotcha, okay. Well that makes sense. And you are currently under definitely going to stop prior to that procedure just because blood flow is very, very important. Just want to make sure we have as much blood flow as possible so we don't risk you know, losing a nipple. Right, absolutely. Um and then just just from what you've told me already then definitely uh uh, double incision will be what I'll go for. So, as far as specific activities, um, do you currently work? Are you a student? Uh, yeah, yeah, I work full time. I have my own uh, business. Awesome. Thanks. That is the best way to be, I think. Yeah, I do like websites and social media for like LGBT businesses. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, thanks. So as far as incisions go, some people like the straight across, some like the subpectoral curve. Have you thought about it? Um, I have thought about the um, the, pec the pectoral curve. I think it might I think it might work well with my body because I do I have a little bit of uh, muscle under there. I don't know. That would just be a question for her, I suppose. Honestly, people who already kind of have a little bit of muscle to their chest, the pectoral muscles, they tend to like the, the incisions to, to kind of follow that pectoral line. It just right. looks a little bit more natural and a little bit more disguised. Yeah, definitely that one for sure. Okay. So did you have a time frame in mind as far as when you were hoping to possibly schedule? Um, I was hoping for uh, sometime this summer. I don't know how backlogged you guys usually are. Currently, right now, we are pretty much booked up until we have, I think, three dates available, or three slots available in April, three in May, one or two in June, and July is looking pretty open, so we're starting okay. to get pretty full. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, yeah, I, I need time to come up with my end anyway, so I think it'll, it'll, should land right on top, on schedule for us, so that's, I think it'll work. everything I need. I do like to go through a few things with everyone, kind of as far as what to expect after surgery. Mm -hmm. um, so there will be some restrictions. There will be no push-pulling, lifting anything heavier than uh, 20 pounds for at least four to six weeks. Right. We just want to make sure that everything has a chance to heal properly. Yeah, I, I, definitely. I definitely would have to wear a post-operative binder. Okay. Um, so this binder, we want you to wear for at least two weeks after surgery. Okay, so like 14 days at least. Do you usually recommend like longer for healing? It really is kind of up to everybody. Everyone's different. I wore mine longer. Uh, I had the, the nipple graft procedure. Dr. Shree did mine back in 2016. Mm -hmm. I wore my binder a little bit longer just because I wanted to make sure I didn't mess anything up. Um, so if you, right. if you notice any swelling or if you have any swelling after two weeks, it's definitely only going to um, help to continue to wear it. Right. So it doesn't mean you have to wear it. 23 hours a day like you were. Just, yeah. You know, if you're busy and you notice swelling, put it back on. It's not going to hurt anything. Got you. Okay, that makes sense. 
but we only specifically require that two weeks. Okay. Uh, you would have drains. The drains would be in place for one week. So the one week follow-up is your only required follow-up. We'd have you come back in, we'd go ahead and remove the drains. Uh, the type of drains that we use here are called pin rows. So they're not the ones that you may have seen other offices use. Um, they don't have the bulbs on them. You don't have to worry about clamping that on anything or measuring out any of the fluid. Mm -hmm. um, our drains, they feel almost like a uh, latex glove. They're super soft. Um, they are about the same width as a straw, like a drinking straw. Right. So about half to two inches will go inside, half an inch will stick out on each side. All you do is just cover it with a pad, so a maxi pad or a maternity pad, what we typically use here. Uh, I know it sounds a little crazy, but they work, they're absorbent, so right. just change them once a day. Yeah, I saw that on your guys' uh, videos, on one of your videos. Yeah, that makes sense. Perfect. So we, we try to make it everything as easy as possible, and then we just would come back in for that one week, we'd go ahead and remove those drains, remove the dressings, and just make sure that everything's going the way it needs to. Got you, cool. Have any questions for me that I might answer? Um, um, let me see. I was trying to think if any of them are for you. Um, so, uh, no drains. The, so, I'll have drains, right? Yeah, yeah. Have drains for one week. They'll be under the binder. Go, oh, okay, got you. Um, and and dog is is dog ears something that like I worry should worry about like with my body type or is that a question for her? a question for her um, okay. I, I do like to tell people that if she does think that you would have have it like if doggers were a risk she would just go ahead and make that incision a little bit longer to make sure that it doesn't happen okay got you cool she would definitely let me know. absolutely yeah that makes sense I think that'll be it yeah. okay cool well, what I'm gonna do I'll let Dr. Sheree know that you are on the line and ready for her and she will be on the line in just a minute, okay? Perfect, thank you. You're very welcome. I cannot take this chicken during this phone call for real. That's my neighbor chicken. Seriously. Hi, is this Aaron? Hey, yes it is. Hey, yes. <laughs> Um, I have a cousin named Aaron, and it's spelled just that way, so that'll help me remember it. Heck yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, uh, I know that you uh, get a lot of information from Max and from the documents that we email, so Mike. I'd like to just start by asking what questions you have for me right off the bat, if there's anything that hasn't been answered, and then I am going to kind of walk you through how things go from here. Okay. So, anything for me right off the bat that you'd like for me to talk about or answer um no i i don't think uh i saw um you had like what's called a bra roll like ex, ex, extension i mean i think I, I wasn't sure what that was like i saw that on your site but it didn't really explain what it was okay yeah you do not need that okay, um cool. that is for people who have extra skin on the sides of their chest like a roll of skin on the side okay yeah i see what you're saying um and so i need like that's for people when I have to take the front and then like extend it all the way back right. towards their back because of a roll of skin. You don't have that. If anything, we might do a little liposuction, but that's mm -hmm. just part of the procedure. You right. won't see that separately on your quote. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, don't worry about that. All right, yeah. I think... Uh, what else? Anything else on your mind right now? or? Uh, I don't think so, not yet. Okay, well... Um, let me just tell you a little bit about how things go from here. Basically, when you and I finish speaking, Kevin is going to email you your official quote. Mm -hmm. um, and then whenever you want to talk to Kevin about scheduling, he does all the scheduling, you can just call or email whenever you're ready. If you already have something in mind, um, I can just transfer you to him when we finish speaking, it's up to you. But once you actually schedule a surgery date, about two weeks prior, you would get an email from our nurse friend and it's gonna have your show up time, when to stop eating and drinking the night before, any medications that you should take or not take, and you know when to not take them before surgery. Um, and all that will basically, all your instructions for surgery will be in that email. Got you. Um, that email will also say that your prescriptions have been sent through to your pharmacy, so 
whatever pharmacy that you've told us that you want to use, we'll go ahead and send your um, post-op prescription so you can pick them up and bring them with you. One is an anti nausea patch that you stick behind your ear on the morning of surgery, so you do want to pick those up beforehand. Okay, cool. Um, any questions kind of about scheduling surgery or leading up to surgery or anything like that? I don't think so, no. Um, I do, well, I do have a, I do use trans tape um, for my skin. Uh -huh. Um, I wasn't sure if that's something that I should like hold off on like for the a, a week or two I'm not sure if you've heard of it or if it if it affects top surgery. I was just curious on your on what you've seen If, if, if it causes Irritation um, Or you get like that fungal rash or breakouts on your chest from it. I would hold it if it doesn't do that to you Then it's okay. It's right. up to you if you want to use it or not before surgery um Basically, just if it makes your skin inflamed or break out, you kind of want to avoid anything that does that if you can. Uh, yeah, right. Um, but other than that, you can keep using it. Okay, cool. Um, on the day of surgery, you and I would meet here in one of the exam rooms, and I'll do markings on you. And if you have anything you want me to look at or any questions or comments, we'll go over them. Okay. Um, then you meet your anesthesia provider and she'll put in an IV. She's very, very experienced. And then we'll take you back to the OR. You will be completely asleep for the procedure. Um, okay. And you do need somebody with you to drive you back um, to your hotel or, right. or you know whatever you're doing after surgery. Um, any questions about kind of surgery day or surgery itself or anything like that? Um, I don't think so. I, I know usually you like resize like um, like the nipples. I wasn't sure if like my if my size were like close to what you usually do or because I know mine aren't as, as big as I've seen. Um. Right. Yeah, we always go around the areola. Um, you won't need a large difference as far as the center nipple. You know, um, if you definitely wanted it smaller, we'll make it smaller. Right. Otherwise, I well, typically, once the test is done and then we put the nipples on, we'll look mm -hmm. and see if the, actually the center looks too big then compared to the areola and then we'll right. um, just, to, you know, we'll do a nipple revision as needed right. if somebody doesn't have a strong preference. Right. Yeah, usually, I, yeah, I think mine are close to about the right size. So, yeah, I, don't, I definitely don't want any, yeah. like, tiny, you know, tiny, tiny, like, spots or whatever that right. looks like. Right. Yeah. Um. Definitely, and then he, he I, Max ref, talked about um, like the wider scars. Um, if there's like a concern of dog ears, I wasn't sure if that was something that you saw on there. So the dog ears are basically what happens if someone has extra skin or fat on the side of the chest that you don't do anything about during surgery, so it's hanging off the side when the front's flat. Right. So we'll just do lipo if needed, but okay. that's not going to be an issue. Okay, got you. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I don't think, I think that pretty much answers my questions for, for now. Okay. Um, as far as complications, they're not common. Most people don't have any. It's less than 5%. But if something's going to happen, it's typically a seroma, which is just some fluid that collects under the skin after surgery that we would massage out or draw with a needle and, um, uh, syringe. Second most common thing would be a minor wound problem, like a hair tries to go through the incision, or you spit a suture and you have a little opening in the incision. Right. If that happens, you would just send us pictures, and we'll just tell you what to do. But okay. usually, it's just cleaning it off once a day and putting a bandage over until it heals over. It's usually not a big deal. Right. Um, and then the third most common, which is very uncommon, would be infection. You're not at particular risk for that. That's less than two percent, but we would send antibiotics wherever you were, something like that were to happen. But right. again, it's not at all common. Um, any other questions that you have right now? Um, I don't think so. I'd like to, you know, I'd like to use, lose a few pounds before surgery in the summertime. So, um, that's, per, that's, and quit smoking, of course. So those will be my, that's my plan for being prepared on my end. Um, you don't, okay. and you don't usually have the scars meet in this, in the center, do you? You won't need that. So the okay. only reason I do that is if somebody's breast skin does meet in the middle and you have to do that so they're not left with like a lump of skin sitting there. Right, yeah, I see what um, you're saying. So you're already not touching in the center, so you won't need that. Okay, perfect. 
Okay. Well, Kevin's going to be sending you out your quote. Did you want to talk to him about open dates, or are you just going to call back when you're ready? Yeah, I think I'll need to call back when I'm ready because I know it's a little bit uh, out still. Um, but uh, I'll definitely be giving him a call soon. I, uh, I appreciate your time. Yeah, absolutely. If something else comes up that you have questions about, you know how to get in touch with us. Um, and when you call, usually because Kevin has people at the front, he doesn't always you know, pick up the phone right away. So just leave a voicemail because he always will listen for the voicemail and give you a call back. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, well, have a great day. Thank you, I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. It's time to start saving, y'all. I need to start saving some money, you know what I mean? It's time to start saving. It's time to start saving like crazy. Focused. We're gonna get this done. Bet.